Hey, Marwan, you took over this club in 2013. How would you sum up the past couple of years? Roller coaster of rider, of ride, up and down, but uh, we're moving the right way now. We had uh, probably an early season hiccup, you know, when we played St. Helens, but it's been, you know, that deflated me a little bit, but it's been good since then. Well, you mentioned that particular game and the tweet afterwards, the, the now infamous tweet that you'd I had enough. I have had enough. What did you mean by that? Or do you think people took it too literally? No? <laughs> <laughs> you meant I what meant you what said. I meant what it said. Exactly, yeah. Look, I'm a human after all, like everybody else, and I have feelings and emotions. That day, nothing was going right for me or for the club. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, a result like that uh, in the evening, you know, when we got hammered, when we shouldn't have done, uh, really, by then I did have uh, enough, and I, um, that we, uh, but it said I had enough, and I really meant it, and I was ready to walk away from the sport and from the club. What changed your mind then? No, I reflected about, over it, uh, about it over the weekend, and um, I have a commitment to my boys, the ones I brought into the club. And, um, you know, I, everyone I signed, I promised them that we were going to be competing, etc. And I wasn't going to uh, leave a sinking ship. And I spoke to the boys on Monday, made it absolutely clear uh, that I'm fully committed to them. I have full faith in them. And it's just an early season hiccup. Things weren't going well. I just explained to them what's gone on. And now we move on. Do you regret putting that out on, on social media now when you look back at it? Or do you feel, well, that was how no, I felt at the time? That's how I felt at the time. And, you know, we should be allowed, no matter what, who you are, whether you are a player, uh, a fan or an owner, you know, we all have feelings. And I made my feelings clear at the time. Since having that chat then with, with the team, with the manager, what kind of response have you have you had from them? It's been very, very positive response and, uh, you know, we, we played very well against Hull despite all the injuries we've had. People talk about injuries, we've had injuries before and after the game, you know, and during the game. And during the game when we lost our fullback and wing, um, you know, within the space of a couple of minutes, within the space of two minutes, you know, uh, wasn't easy uh, to reshuffle the side. But we did, and we won that game, and we competed very well in Catalan. Well, that was a very exciting game, wasn't it? You also have quite a good um, communications and quite a good reputation, quite a good um, relationship with the fans as well, don't you? What's been, what, what do they talk to you about a lot of the time? Uh, we talk about an awful lot of things. Most of the fans ask who's going to replace Gareth Hawk, and I'm not going to give them uh, an answer for that. Uh, listen, um, you know, when I came in as an owner, I, I've always made it clear the fans are very important uh, or play a very important part of uh, the club. And um, I'm probably the only one uh, in Super League or in, in, in sport in this country where my director of boards, uh, sorry, board of directors um, is replaced by, by fans. I have 10 fans who are representative of, you know, the whole fans and we sit and we meet and we discuss various issues. Having said that, you need more of them through the gate though, don't you? Yeah, that's been very, very disappointing. You know, it's, um, look, we are unlikely to get more than 3,000 today. And uh, for me, I'm, I don't know what more can I do, you know, whether to, you know, to encourage them, which I have been doing over social media. Uh, we've got fantastic side that, uh, and to be honest, it's probably the best side so far they have had over the last 30, 40 years. So why they're not coming, I don't, I don't really know. But well, it's very disappointing. After that disappointing uh, game with St. Helens, um, you brought Tim Sheens over. Just to explain or, or tell us how that, that came about, how that meeting and how him coming over here all happened. Tim is a, a good mate of mine. We've known each other for a while. And uh, Tim had some spare, you know, spare time in his hands. And I invited him over to come over for three, four weeks. And I said to him, mate, come over. Um, just advise me uh, on various bits and pieces and help everybody in the club. And he has been uh, great. You know, he's been spending a lot of time here working with everybody, working with me, working with Martin, my CEO, with the coach, assistant coaches, you know, the physios, everybody. You know, just giving us a different perspective of... Uh, uh, what 
So it's been, it's been a, a beneficial trip for him uh, and for you as well. It's like he's had a real impact, do you think? Well, it's been beneficial for us. I don't know about Tim. You know, it's been a poor thing. He's been working really hard. But it's a great to have somebody of his stature in a, uh, and of his experience as well. You know, this is something I've lacked in the past. Somebody to, you see, I'm, I'm only a novice in rugby league. And to have somebody like Tim Sheens coming over to advise me, and he has no personal interest, so he'll give you the advice based on his experience. And it's great, and I've learned a lot, an awful lot from him. I wish I'd done it last year, though. Do you think you'd, you'd have him over more, more, more frequently then, if you, if you could? Ask him if he's available. <laughs> if he is, of course I would love to. He's a great person to have, uh, to have around the club. And I, I promise you, every single person in the club enjoyed meeting him. Whether it's admin staff, cleaners, players, coaching staff, management, owner, we all loved him being here. But since he's been here, the, the, the results have, have certainly got better. And the, people talk about the Tim Sheens effect. He seems to have had that. Do you think he's had that on you as well? He's, had, he's, he's giving you ideas, he's giving you food for thought and a, a new enthusiasm, perhaps. Ask me after this game and after the Castleford game. But it, it, it looks like it, yeah. I mean, listen, some, you know, to spend some time. He has spent some time with the players and they've appreciated it. And maybe, maybe it's the Tim Sheens effect, I don't know. But Yastin has been working very hard as well. You said that as the results are getting better, you expect this team to get a lot stronger but by Easter. What do you think the chances are of, of Salford then making the players? It's an extremely important year, 2015, isn't it? I've always claimed and I've always said 2015 is a very important year for Salford on and off the field. On the field, we should be in the top eight. You know, that's the quality of the side we have there. On Beber, we are a top six side. And, you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't be in the playoffs. In terms of the crowd, hopefully, you know, I'm looking at the next three, four games. They're all winnable. You can't take anything for granted. But they are the type of games that we should be winning. And hopefully, that will give sort the excitement to entice um, fans back to the, the stadium or even new fans to come to the stadium. This is the most, by the way, this is the mo one of the most expensive stadiums in the country and we need the bloody fans to come here. <laughs> <laughs> they need to pay the rent. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you, you'd, lo I say, you'd love to see a, you know, a full stadium cheering on some oh, that, that would be great. That would be great. And, um, I'm hoping, you know, like I said, you know, the next four games are winnable games or games that we should be competing and putting good results together. Then we're going to go into the Easter with two big games against Wigan, against Leeds. If we don't fill the stadiums, then we will never do. You, you, you spoke very recently about the NRL and how you maybe want to branch out to, to the NRL. Do you still... Um, is that something you still want to pursue? Have you spoken to Tim maybe about something like that? Uh, I've spoken to Tim about the NRL and um, he hasn't changed my mind. I still want to get involved in the NRL. Uh, and, um, and I had hoped by now I would have been involved, but look, things you know, will happen when they are meant to happen. But that's my ultimate aim. Uh, I love the sport. I love the competition over there. And sorry, but it is a, a superior competition to what we have over here, and I want to be part of it. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it's a superior game over there than here? Or how far are, is the Super League away from NRL, do you think? Several years. We are way behind them. And the reason for it is because they have the better quality players. The reason they have the better quality players is because they could afford to pay them more. Again, that goes back to the salary cap, and this, it's what I've always spoken about. You know, you have a higher salary cap, a marquee player, yeah, you could attract, you know, the, the big players from Australia to come over here. And it's the kind of thing uh, probably Tim would confirm as well. So, you, as I say, you still want to pursue that, you're still actively looking to do something like that? I have a team currently in Australia pursuing that on my behalf. That's exclusive for you.
that watch this space. Absolutely.